Andrew, uh, thanks so much for, for joining us. Uh, how are you? Stuart, I'm very well. And uh, I'm lucky, I think, to be at home. Uh, I've travelled so much in the last few few years, but the last 35 years of, of work, and in fact, even before that with John for the five years. So for 40 years, I seem to have been flying. Uh, it's, uh, it's a real treat to be able to be at home with one's family, uh, but at the same time communicate and watch and work with all of the office. Yeah. And where is home? Where are you now? Uh, home is a small farm in Surrey. Uh, and so it's a, I've, been, I've been living here and have developed it probably 20 years ago. So we moved here to have some horses in paddocks. And it's, uh, I'm very lucky with it. It's an hour from the office. Uh, I shoot up the A3. And I've done that for 20 years. It's either the 20 minutes to Gatwick. It's uh, about 35 minutes to Heathrow. Perfect. And it's an hour to the office. So uh, we're lucky. And actually, when we bought it and moved here, part of the reason was to get away from the airline uh, flight paths. So we're equidistant between Gatwick and Heathrow. And, but now... There is absolute sky silence. It's quite extraordinary. It's weird, isn't it? You know, yeah. It's weird. Um, and there's just literally no, no um, uh, air, air, you know, none of those uh, white paths through the sky. Uh, the sky seems to be brighter at night. I don't know why, but uh, you see, see more stars. Um, it's quiet. It's really quiet. Uh, it's always been quiet here at home. But yeah. my goodness, if I go for one, my bike ride a day, it is, it is extraordinarily empty, which is great. Everyone is working from home or everyone is at the home and isolated. Uh, I haven't a clue what it must feel like in the city. I feel desperately sorry for the people stuck in um, apartments and flats in town and without gardens to wander about. And that, is, that must be purgatory. Yeah. Um, well, it's, uh, yeah. So you so you you're still you're doing your government allowed one exterior moment of exercise a day. My my blue marine bike challenge has started. Uh, still on an e-bike, but my son who is isolating here with us uh, is a is also a biker. So he's using my um, my Pearson bike, and I'm using a Trek e-bike, and uh, we're doing between twenty five k and thirty five forty k a day. That's good. Uh, to try and get ready, try and get going. It's actually helping me a great deal. It, one, it's helping my back, which I had a lot of problems with a couple of years ago. Um, and it's helping my, my mental position, I think, in coping with uh, the virus, to be able to go for a bike ride. Yeah. We have, with our office, we have a bike club. And uh, a lot of them are biking as, uh, as they live around Richmond and around Barnes and Wimbledon and, and uh, Wandsworth. They're biking around Richmond Park. Um, there's about 25 of them, and a lot of the people from Blue Marine, uh, SJ is biking. Yeah. Um, and I can watch them all on Strava. I can congratulate them, give them the kudos, thumbs up, and I think it builds a family, a family of friendship, which is good. Yeah. And because that is so important, when everyone is no longer a three-dimensional figure, everyone's just a, an image on a on a screen. In uh, when you're talking to your company that it's important to maintain that kind of sense of camaraderie and joint effort and we're all pulling in the same direction, all that kind of stuff. It's very difficult, though. A hundred percent. We've been watching some um, motivational speakers and one of them has taught us something already yesterday. Uh, I think it was, um, it was written down. It was, uh, it was a phrase from... Um, uh, it was a phrase from Simon, Simon Sinek at a talk. He said, uh, how to create a new environment in which people can work at their natural best. Yeah. Um, and I think that has struck a note with Jim and Simon, I know and I, that we can find a way to be stronger through this. We can uh, communicate whenever we want, to be honest. Uh, it, what it stops me doing is getting up and running around the office like a... Uh, like a mad person, but I enjoy the running around. So it's I finding the the staying put somewhat frustrating. Yeah. Uh, but I'm um, uh, I I love looking at things and looking at drawings. Jim and Simon are running the two studios. Jim running yachts and aviation, and Simon running architecture. And we're lucky. We have uh, a lot of work. We have a full 
full uh, studio team working on a lot of things. And there were a lot of drawings to get out for architecture, aviation, and yacht projects. So we are still working to those same deadlines to make sure that we deliver to the shipyards or to the firms of Technic for a plane project where that we can deliver the drawing packages so they can have no delay from us. So you haven't noticed any kind of disruption in workflow or clients uh, pulling out or any delays or anything like that? The thing that's caused delays is children. Oh, <laughs> children tell me about it. God, it's a nightmare. I, I, only have a, I only have a granddaughter, and that's bad enough. But my, my own daughter is foreign editor at The Telegraph, as you know. Well, she is pretty busy at the moment. And so uh, uh, Jane and I are helping out with Matilda. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's, But it's a nice opportunity. I'm, yeah. I think a lot of the office are finding homeschooling and working uh, quite a difficult thing to, to focus on. You know, there are definitely times in the day that we now realize do not call someone who's got children because they're either bathing them, feeding them, try, trying to finish a coursework of an hour on, on electronics or maths or, or algebra or whatever they do these days. Luckily, my children are not that age. So um, I, think, I think the only factor at home working is that you're not at a desk, that you're, you can, you're with your colleagues and you can focus, uh, really, really have that focus. But when they can find a place to work at home, uh, they are all getting on extremely uh, successfully. Oh, great. Um, those that haven't got children are working as if they were at their desk in their office. Yeah. Um, it's no different. They we we set up. Um, I know our CEO uh, initiated for for the company uh, a strategy of trying to help us travel less for for our eco and our um, ecological footprint of the office. We were working with Planet Mark who are a company that, uh, and, a, and a charity that have been working with us for a couple of years to try and reduce our electricity, to try and reduce our heat loss, to try and reduce our That's great. footprint in flight. So we were doing all that. And uh, so with that in mind, we were working on, on em empowering everybody with laptops, uh, iPads, mobile company, mobile phones. So we had, I think we had an order for 75 new laptops wow. of the highest grade uh, already ordered in about beginning, end of January, beginning of February. That was good timing. So we just went, we were very lucky, yeah. we went straight into loading them up. Our, our IT department, Russell, has been working off his feet and has done a phenomenal job. We, we all of us at Winch, congratulate him and the team for, for setting us up, his team. Um, and marketing is, Lisa and marketing is, is continuing to send stuff to you to look at what we can do. Um, so imagination is, is our game. That's what we sell. Yeah. We sell drawings and imagination. And this is an opportunity to think out of the box again, another time in our 36 years or something of the company history. We have to think of the next evolution. Going back those 36 years, remind me what the first, it was, your, it was the first yacht. It was like a 36 foot. It was a 36 foot swan. That's right. With, with uh, Herman Frères. And, uh, and then it rolled on to... Uh, well, at the time, I, my first client, of course, was John Bannerberg in reality, because he kept me on as a project manager, as a freelance project manager, because the clients were all happy. So we were building, at the time, the largest sailboat down in Poole called Starlight, which was 84 feet. <laughs> we were building the largest boat that Nautor had ever built, which was called Garuda, which was a custom boat with Ron Holland. Yeah. And, and interestingly... Uh, and then I went on to work with Ron, with Cyclos, with Sensation, with with Royal Eagle, um, and uh, and I now I'm actually look, hoping, and uh, I believe we've won a contract to work with him on a new 42 meter uh, schooner. Oh, great! Which, oh, congratulations! Uh, he has out to bid at the moment, and we hope we've talk, talked it through with the owner. So we're um, we're working on mock-up drawings for that. Um, Ron Ron is so excited about doing this new project. It's a very classic, very typical run boat, a uh, lovely shear line, a lot of camber, but a schooner rig, so it'll be a very powerful reaching boat across the Pacific. Well, it's a while since there's been a sailing boat in the winch design portfolio, so that's a, it's a great one to have. Well, we are building a 90-foot sailboat with Bill Tripp. Uh, we're also building, um, we're still building at Geno. The 64, the 54, the yeah. 51, and 57. I drew and about. I drew about those Geno 64s. When, when I was saying, yes. oh, such nice boats. 
you know we we have it's the most successful sixty foot plus boat that's ever been um, yeah. production boat that's ever been built. Um, I heard in at the Dusseldorf boat show. I was there with Eric from the marketing department, and Eric said, "Yes, they've sold eighty, so they're in the build of another uh, another twelve this year. Probably eight this year. They'll probably slow it down it's a bit. Wild. Probably another eight will be delivered this year. So we'll be up to, and we're doing a re-edition of that. But we're also talking them and, and received. Can you believe it? We received from them this week. That's how forward-looking they are." The instruction to work with Philip Brion I'm on a new pair of boats for them. Uh, congratulations. Um, you know, I'm, exci- I'm as, as excited about that as drawings that we've completed for a new 90 metre motor this week, um, which will go out to bid uh, when the brokers are ready with uh, Imperial. But it's an exciting time. It's not actually, you know, it is a very exciting creative time. The, uh, the, the challenge of designing a 64 foot, but I always think that. Um, there's a, obviously there's a prestige to designing enormous, you know, hundred meter plus motor yachts, which of course you've done. But then designing um, a sixty four foot boat must be equally as challenging in a way because you're you obviously have much less volume to play with, but you're expected to pack so much in. Your use of space must be calculated to the final, you know, square centimeter almost. I I. I balance it in our in the. I love designing boats and I love designing sailboats. Um, and I was planning to try and build something for many years, and I was always told, "Not yet, not yet." Um, it's about. Uh, it's a big investment. And then when they asked me to do it, I started to design exactly the type of boat I would quite like. Uh, and so I very much focused, which you don't know, at trying to work out how I think we should sail mm-hmm. and and the comfort factor, the lifestyle factor, the look, tone, and feel. Um, the Geno 64 uh, became a very detailed job for us, and I would, I would put it in in the same, uh, the same capacity as doing a Boeing business jet or an Airbus uh, ACJ, you know, a twin engine jet of that size has the same accommodation as a Geno 64, yeah. and it took us the same amount of time because Geno work with uh, five-axis milling machines. They work on on full 3D computer drawing programs. Every cable, every screw is in a drawing. They're, you know, they have cap- they have calculated the cost and the weight uh, and the installation time of every single item inside every boat we've done with them. You don't find that on a boat building a lesson. You know, yes, you get on with it, and they're built. They're built. They take about the same amount of time. You know, this. So a two and a half year design project for a sixty four foot sailboat is about the same time as doing a Boeing business jet, and we have two of those building at the moment. We have a Dreamliner building at Lufthansa, a, 7, 4, a 787. That is a huge project. That's more like doing a 90-meter motor yacht project. It's so complicated, but very exciting. Yeah. So our diversity, I think, has given us, at this time, uh, with, with home working, has given us this opportunity to stay uh, uh, under uh, in, in capacity work, which is very helpful. Yeah. I mean, can you recall, obviously, Given that you, the studio has been around for thirty six years, have you ever? Is there, has there ever been a time like this? Obviously, 0809 was a challenge, but everything just kind of shutting up shop almost overnight. It, it's a, it's a it's a very bizarre well, sensation. You say it? that. Well, I, I'll run I'll run back a bit. The first recession we went through, uh, we were probably four and a half years or five years into our business, and we found. Uh, there, were no, there was no business whatsoever, but we were 100% sailing yachts. Yeah. We had like three sailing yacht projects building, um, and they were running out, and we didn't have a new business. And I appreciated then and learned the lesson that motor yacht market is much bigger, as you know, with, with uh, Boat International. And if we couldn't find ourselves a motor yacht project, we were not going to survive. And it came down to literally the last day before we probably... Uh, had to close the office. We had put everybody in everybody in the office, and there were only six of us. Had decided to take no salary for two months. We postponed any bonuses, which we'd given everybody at Christmas, and we had to uh, we had to I had to work very very hard, and it was a tough time for Jay and I and the team. You know, Evan Marshall, uh, Mark Whiteley, they were all with me at the office at that oh. point. Um, 
And it was tough. Um, but we won, at that point, our first Mojo project, which was a Fed ship success. It was a 49-meter Mojo. It was called White Rabbit for an Asian. Ah, yes. Uh, for, a Chi- for a Chinese Singapore owner. And I learned about China, and I learned about what they needed, and I learned about the, you know, why is it called White Rabbit? I learned about the philosophy that he wanted to not sit outside. He wanted to sit in the shade. He wanted to fish a lot. He wanted to, to dive and submarine. And, and the, God, the boat had so many things on it. And every cabin, we had four guest cabins and the master, but every cabin could sleep four people. And I said, why? And he said, well, we all grew up living in the same bedroom. So I've got, we've got no problem. My brother will have the second double bed in the master bedroom when we go cruising. And so there will be two couples in the master bedroom. I, I learned so much. That was my first motor yacht order. And uh, it went on to win um, an award as the best motor yacht of the year. And from there, our motorboat industry, uh, motorboat business really took off. And how did you get, how did it, you get that, how did you get that uh, contract? I got it because the client had a swan. Uh, and he liked the way I used a lot of space in that. It's a little thought, Swan 36. I mean, he saw that, but he, he was building, I think, a 65-foot Swan. And he, he'd seen me, seen what I was doing on the 36. He couldn't believe how comfortable it was. And his, uh, his, his broker persuaded him to talk to us. And uh, we won that first White Rabbit. My mistake was actually not keeping closer in touch, because maybe I would have done the next two White Rabbits. But I missed it. You know, you have to, you have to understand the business. You have to follow the leads. And in that scenario, I was unable to follow the lead where the Singapore owner was going to build the next, the next boats in New Zealand, I think it was, and then and now the trip, the trimaran white rabbit right, yeah. uh, in Australia. Uh, he's always wanted something outside the box, that client. And I think I also, with Ron, I was building a lot of boats. I did about five boats in New Zealand, and I came to the conclusion that with a studio of about seven people, eight people. I just couldn't travel that much. I was burning myself out. And I needed to consider working only within the European market. And we took that as a, for better or worse, the company, my family, myself said, I cannot burn myself out flying for a one-day meeting in New Zealand and back again, uh, which I was doing. Um, But I was also then, at the same time, I was working, building the Platinum Project, which became Motiot Dubai. I was going every week. Uh, to to the Far East, uh, to Brunei, to have two day meetings uh, with Peter Larson, you know, about 162 meter motor yacht, yeah. which we won out of nowhere. So really, we were we've had some very lucky breaks. And was that 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 first experience when you got White Rabbit, which basically kept the studio alive? Would that be fair? A hundred percent. It kept the first that. That first uh, commitment fee invoice was paid, and and we had cash in the bank. We also found at that point uh, a change. My father was our non-executive chairman for about seven years in the early days, and we went through this period and asked for his help, and he said, you've got to have a commitment fee. You need to be cash positive on your projects. You can't bankroll the, the projects. You're too small. The clients are big. We're small. So from that moment on, we've taken great care of our accounts team, team and and I know take great, great care to try to be cash positive on every project. And at this time, that's helping us you know, with, with the virus. We can, we have, uh, we have, we have funds in the in the bank for each of the projects we're working on, so we can pay our staff. We can keep work, working. Uh, not everybody is busy in our office. It's definitely seen a tail off. You know, there's not as much admin. There's not as much office management. There's not as much. Um, you know, we do lunch for everybody. We do. Uh, fruit and flowers and everything else in the office. That sort of stuff obviously is tailed off. So we have um, uh, we have people who aren't as busy. Fine, you know, we'll work that through. We'll work it out. But we had we have to, had to find a way in all of the all of my career and the career of Winch to look at at how to run the business. This today is another challenge for everybody working. It's a challenge for the airline industries. It's a challenge for uh, catering businesses. Uh, it's a challenge for the shipyards who are having to work 24-7 probably uh, with different ships to keep people apart. I have written to some of the ship. I've written to many of the shipyards and friends. Um, you know, Fed ship are working shifts, Nova Scrooge are working shifts, uh, Hasten are working shifts. 
it's very clever, and they're working out ways how to do this. And it might be a new way we have to, we have to work. I, I think an interesting thing has come out of this. One of the questions we've had from current project clients is, can you fit a medical bay into our boat? We're drawing the first, you know, we, on the bigger PYC boats, you have it, but they say, I want an isolation room, separate light, air conditioning, uh, a way to clean it down to make it bacterially clean. Uh, so out of this is coming some new demands. Yes, they want the gym again. Oh, yeah, you don't, I don't want to lose the gym. I must have the gym on board. But can you find a way somewhere to put in a medical bay? Because I think in the new build, I would like to make sure I have one. That's an interesting change. And do you think it's going to get to the point that this is going to mean, so every time a guest gets on your boat now, there's got to be almost some kind of sanita sanitization station or some kind of area where people have anti and you know, the, the alcohol gel on their hands and all that kind of stuff. I mean, are people going to be much more wary about letting guests, etc., on their boats? I think, first of all, that everybody is going to learn this nice dance of the hands. <laughs> so right. we're, you know, we're all learning how to do this. And I think it's brilliant. You know, yeah. It's going to turn into a, a much bigger joke when we're all doing this all day long in the bathrooms of, at the office. But it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. Uh, we'd always been having, because of, we've always been trying to wonder about how to keep f normal flu, normal bugs out of the office. So we were sterilizing every night and doing a deep clean every week anyway of our studios. Um, now, yes, every basin and we have antibacterial and we have on every floor, we had it. Uh, I have it in my pocket when I'm, when I'm walking around, I have it in my jacket. Yeah. So I use it on, when I was flying, just before all this started, I was down in Cape Town at a project where we're finishing there and building there. And I was, um, you know, you, you get more frantic in the planes. So I was definitely wiping my hand after the, with, with my own antibacterial after using the bathrooms, uh, even after washing my hands. And I was wondering what I touch. So yes, I do think that the people will appreciate cleanliness uh, on yacht projects, but you know, you have to remember that I, I think yachts are probably some of the cleanest places. You know, you only have to see those incredible crew, and I, I take my hat off to all the crew having to stay on board now, yeah. but they, you know, it isn't a fallacy that they do cotton bud cleaning. You know, they, they use a cotton bud to clean the edges of the shower, to clean the edges of the taps, uh, because all of our clients um, have uh, rightly uh, a wish to, be, to have as, as clean an environment as possible, as safe an environment. They don't want to get ill. Um, a number of the bigger clients will have their own doctors who travel with them. Um, and as well as medical teams, you know, they will, as well as security teams. So it, it's, a, it's, it's a fact of life on every boat. We're all going to be wondering how to keep bugs at bay. Yeah, absolutely. So what your, your boat is in the med, presumably, waiting for you. Oh, my, <laughs> I just got an email yesterday. My first, my first trip was going to be to Athens. Um, to join Polar Bear with uh, Matt and Nemi, our crew, um, to cruise from Athens to, to uh, Hydra and Spetsi, oh. uh, and then go through the Corinth Canal back towards uh, the Ionian Islands. Have you so done that before? Have you done, the, have you done the Corinth Canal before? I've never done it. Oh, I've never done it either. It's was, love well, to do she, it. Went to, she, she was in Croatia, because, she was in Corfu, because at the end of last year we got hit by lightning when I was cruising on there. And it's taken nearly four months to re refit and repair oh, really? things. And uh, and I'll say thank you to Pandanius, my insurance company for the boat, because they've been very loyal, and uh, they're going to pay rather a big bill. And I'm very grateful for that insurance. <laughs> um, but it was a, I was sitting in the cockpit when we at night about three in the morning when we got hit by lightning. Yeah, hell of a big bang. All the lights came on in the interior, and then they all went off again. And at that point, you said something has happened. No, you, you know, you don't, you just feel, you just, I just heard a bang. I didn't feel anything. Yeah. Um, it went straight through the boat. But it took out uh, the navigation. It took out uh, winches. It took out all the light systems. It took out the Raytheons. Um, it took out the engine control management, which is electric. Um, but we could start the generator by manually with, with, a, with a button on top of it. So we learned a lot. So our boat is in, is, has now finished all that repairs. And it was taken through the current about three weeks ago, and it's in, in Athens, um, and we were preparing it for my first time to go down for a, a week 
And then British Airways have just sent an email saying, my flight on the 28th of April has been cancelled. So we all know how long we're going to be sitting here and finding, uh, finding pleasures, pleasures is with work and family. You've been on the tractor a lot, I hear. <laughs> I, I, how did you know that? Yes, my, I have two favourite toys at home. Um, I have an old Massey Ferguson, um, which is, is actually this one. Okay, <laughs> which gorgeous, which is the, which is the gorgeous, but which, which, um, which actually was probably what damaged my back because it has no suspension, it has a very heavy clutch, it has a, a fixed seat and no power steering, and I was running around on that two years ago and I, I popped the, the two discs at the bottom of my back, so now I have a uh, a John Deere with power steering and pad. Oh, and luxury! It's still about 20, it's still about fifteen years old. But um, no, this is the time when I have to harrow roll and then top uh, the fields for the first time. Once the water's gone off, I live the fields that we've got, the small fields, uh, are clay. So they go from very muddy to concrete very quickly. So there's a small window when I have to run around. So yes, I have been. I've been learning how to, to do uh, dance moves, like the JCB crack things. <laughs> when, you know, when in doubt, try and find something creative to do with your forklift. <laughs> uh, well, I'll let you get back to your uh, ploughing and your tractor. Well, no, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of letters to write. Oh, okay. um, I've had a lot of great replies from uh, uh, from people I've written to. I've got letters now to write to our clients to thank them for their support. Um, and uh, and then yes, I'll I'll be helping with Matilda probably a bit later on. Our our granddaughter. Good luck, with so, the, good luck with the homework. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Hey, no problem at all. It's, it's always a pleasure, Andrew. Thank you Keep very much. Keep the stuff coming from Boat International. We Do will. stop all your stuff. I, I read it every day, and I love it. So keep it going. And, uh, and remember that Joff has also got a Geno 64, so he's a winch buyer, which is also nice to know, and a very <laughs> old friend. Yeah. He was also the broker that sold Platinum. So I, I, he, sold, um, he sold that 162 meter. Uh, at the time, which was a, quite an experience over a year to work with him on that. So, yeah, I've known Joff a long time, and it's and a lot of the brokers, and a lot of a lot of them are all my friends. So, I wish them all very well. I wish the shipyards all very well. I wish all the subcontractors, furniture makers, please the carpet people, people in Taipei, um, in in um, Taiping, they're all uh, having problems, and they're all going to get get carpets for us produced. I hope soon. A lot of the people, but I would like to thank everybody working for. Uh, for our projects in carrying on doing what they can. That's a great, great sentiment. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Andrew, speak soon. Bye, Stuart. See ya.